Good morning. Welcome to a Facebook Live card class with CJ Card Creations. My name is Christy Hillock. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I am located in Salt Lake City, Utah. I am so glad that you are joining me, whether you are catching me live or if you're watching the replay, make sure that you drop a comment so that I know that you are here. I always like to go back and read comments and chat with you if you have questions or anything that I can help with. Um, so today I wanted to share the Reach for the Stars bundle, which is part of the Stargazing Suite. So this is one that I think could easily be overlooked. And I have only made a couple of projects with it so far, but I think it's going to be one that you really want to have. So I'm going to show everything to you and then create a fun card with a layout that I really like. So um, that's what we're working on today. I have in the description of this video included several links. So the first is to subscribe to my emails. That way you will get the free PDF tutorial for today's project. And uh, also any news about classes or Stampin' Up! announcements, anything like that. And I typically never email more than once a week. Um, so you definitely want to grab that. And then there's a shopping link. If you are looking for products to help make today's project, I would so appreciate your business. So you can just follow that link and that'll have the, um, the demonstrator already selected. And if your order is under $150, I would very much appreciate it if you put in that host code that's listed as well. Um, if your wish list is more than $100, talk to me before you place your order because I can help you get it even cheaper than um, just, you know, if you were going, going to place a regular order. So 20% discount and then some other perks as well. So that would be worth doing if you do have a big wish list. And that's pretty easy to do right now with a new catalog. So. Uh, my next class is next Monday, May 22nd, and that is here at my home in Murray. So if you want to come, if you're local, I would love to have you click on that link and sign up. And then let's see, I think I did leave the link for my in color club because of the way that we are structuring this club, even though the first month has started, I can always set you up later on and help you catch up. So definitely something to consider there. The end colors are a set of five colors that Stampin' Up! releases um, with every new annual catalog. You get five new colors and they last for two years. So this year's new end colors are Boho Blue, Moody Mauve, Wild Wheat, Copper Clay, and Pebbled Path. And they're really rich earth tones. They're a little less exciting when you see them in the catalog, but when you start playing with them, they are really, really nice. So definitely want to do that with every month's order. You get project kits to make three projects with me, Greta, uh, sorry, Greta um, and Leah, who are my creative crafters trio. And finally, the next paper pumpkin is uh, open for registration and that subscription is for the welcome in kit so it coordinates with our countryside in which i don't know if you've seen this fun stamp set yet um but it's got dies that nest that are in this shape as well so that is going to be a really nice kit and they also have coordinating dies so it's a set of three dies that goes with the stamp set in the paper pumpkin which is an exclusive stamp set um the dice are six dollars extra so i think if you have a die cutting machine you totally want to grab those while they're available and they do run out so make sure that you don't wait um that is all that i wanted to tell you so i am going to switch my view here so that you can see this a little better. So this suite is featured on page 86 and 87 of the new annual catalog. And if you don't have this catalog already, please let me know. If you don't already have a demonstrator, I would be happy to get a catalog to you. So you can see they feature a bunch of projects that their artists designed. 
So those are really fun. And then you can also see the designer series paper. And for this suite, they also did what they're calling holographic um, trio specialty paper, but it's it's very similar to like our foil papers. And then you have the stamp set and the bundle. So this is the stamp set. I think that the um, the sentiments in it are really cute. And you know, that kind of sounds like I don't know, greetings, space alien or something. Um, your stellar is great. Reach for the stars. That's such a good one, especially right now as we're in graduation season. And then this is just really sweet too. If you had a star for every time you brighten my day, I'd have an entire galaxy. So you've got this little um, star stamp and then this kind of background stamp, which you know, I love any of the textury splatter kind of stamps, so I thought that was great. So the astronaut and the rocket are going to be a little less versatile, but everything in this is going to be really, really nice for a lot of different projects. And if you go to look at the dies, now I haven't even had a chance to do too much with this, but you can see there's a little flame die for the base of the rocket. You've got these circle dies, which this is one of the things that caught my eye originally because they did retire our layering circles dies. So this is gonna be a nice thing to have on hand for any project. And then this is a die that you can stick a circle planet through and it gives you kind of that rings of Saturn and Jupiter look. Um, you've got these little star dies and then another one over here. Um, that's another flame. This I believe will emboss and not cut. So those look really cool. Um, oh, and then a larger um, or uh, rings die. And then of course your astronaut and your rocket. So these are awesome. And then since I have this out, I was going to show you as well my little trick for keeping track of all of my dies because you know when you've got them all on this sheet they look so nice and they fit so perfectly and then you start using them you take them off and you never can fit them all back on plus you don't know if you have them all so what I like to do is just take this card and flip it over put it on my die cutting plate and then I run it through my die cutting machine. So there is not any cardstock underneath. And this is going to shake the camera, so I apologize. I was trying a different setup to see if I could make the camera not shake like this. And the stand that I have is just not quite long enough as far as the arm for what I have to work. So. Anyway, um, so now that I have cut this, you can see that when I pop one off to use it, it leaves just kind of that indentation for where it belongs. So it's really easy for me to put everything back on here where it belongs and tell if I have everything. So just a quick organizational kind of tip because it is just really nice to know if you have everything. <laughs> it's really easy to lose stuff and I don't like to take the trash out if I have the sense that I might be missing something. In that vein, I also have a stamp organization tip for you. So when you first get your stamps, you know, the red rubber stamps come with a sticker here and then the red rubber stamp has kind of a waxy paper background. Um, so you are supposed to pull off this paper backing and this one is obviously less of an issue because it's one stamp um, but I like to then slide this in the back part of my case and now I know exactly what stamps I have and where they're supposed to go and then you know I just do the whole stickering business and everything's set up. So we, you can tell I've got two stamps pulled because I actually am ready for 
today's card. And then last thing I wanted to show you is just how gorgeous this designer series paper is. So these are 12 by 12 sheets. I just have it cut down to six by six for my paper share. But the colors that they used are gorgeous. And um, you've got lemon lime twist and berry burst and pumpkin pie and crushed curry. And look at all the blues in that piece. So I think that this paper is absolutely stunning. Um, different depths of sky, I guess. So some are more blue and some are more towards black. So that is that designer series paper. And now we are ready for our project. So what we are making today is this cute little card with the fun layout. Um, and then when you open it, I've pulled a piece of the designer series paper and added it to here and then just a little stamp. So, oh, and I don't think I have those gems out, but these gems are not actually part of the suite. They are called the adhesive backed sparkle gems. And they are so pretty, um, really elegant. I think you can use these in a lot of different settings. But with all of the black in this project, I felt like the black gems would work really nicely. So let's get started. We have all of our pieces here and ready to go. And let's see. So I am not going to try to tell you all of the dimensions for this because you don't need to worry about trying to remember everything. Just make sure that you can grab that PDF from my email. So this piece of cardstock actually looks, I mean, it's almost as big as the card base itself, which is crushed curry. Um, but there is just enough of a crushed curry border around that pumpkin pie that it gives some of, it pulls some of the color out of the designer series paper. So that is going to go like that. And then this piece of designer series paper will go just on top. However, you can see that it's too long. And I did that for a reason because I wanted to show you how I cut my designer series paper. So, you know, it's a 12 by 12 panel. So if you cut it in four inch strips, so now you have four by 12, then you can cut it down to four by six which is what this is. And now the panel for the front of the card actually needs to be five and a quarter. So if I trim this down to five and a quarter, then I have this little strip to put on the inside of my project. So that is where that comes from. And that helps you not waste cardstock, which is always not, sorry, not cardstock, but designer series paper, which is always nice. Um, it's really hard to throw away those little half inch strips or inch strips, but ultimately it can be difficult to use them. So this piece is going to, oh, that blue sky, so pretty. Um, this is going to go on our black cardstock and we'll just mat this up like so. Let that dry for a minute because we will be cutting through that. Now we can go ahead and adhere the rest of these panels together. So it really doesn't take a lot of adhesive. Um, if you use too much adhesive, it will squish out. The paper, paper will get wet and start to curl. So it is really important that you have a light touch with your liquid glue. All right, so that is all set. Now we can go ahead and put this on the card base. And I know I started at a really random time this morning we um, just continue to get busier. So I still have baseball going on for my son. And then my daughter 
has a carnival with her school today that I am supposed to be doing a game for, but she has been homesick for a couple of days. So I don't even know if we're going to get to go do that. All right, so you can see how that is all mounted up. Now, a lot of times I would have taken something out of the center of that pumpkin pie panel just to save cardstock. I don't use a lot of oranges and yellows, so I just wasn't that worried about using a little extra here. So if you wonder what my rationale is, it's really just that. All right, so this piece of basic black is four inches wide, and I can't remember exactly what I cut it at. Let's see, I'm going to cut it at one and a quarter inches. So I'll bring my trimmer back in here. And I'm just lining it up on this side. And we'll cut right through that. Let's see. With them, like so. Okay, so then this is going to adhere so that the edges are flush. And with that, I know that there's a little bit of a depth difference here. So I don't want to go right up to the edge. Um, I don't want to be far off, but just a little bit. All right, so then we're just going to line up this piece. And then, because I really want it to be straight, what I'm going to do is use my grid paper to kind of see where this needs to end up over here. So, now we can again line it up right at the edge of the card and you can see it's a really small distance between the two panels but it's enough that i just think it makes a really unique look so now we have this piece of crushed curry and we need our memento black ink for this and the greetings friend stamp set What is that saying? Is it greetings earthling? I'm not sure what it is that I hear in my head whenever I read that sentiment. There is that. And close that ink pad for just a second while we do this. You know, I have to use my banners pick a punch. So I'm going to grab this to flag the ends. It is easy to do this with scissors. I just don't like to because I think that it's uneven and then I sniff a little more and then it's still uneven. So I sniff a little more and then I have to restamp because I screwed up the whole thing. So there is that. And this is the only thing on this card front that I am going to pop up with dimensionals. Um, just didn't feel like any of the other parts needed to be popped up. So get our little dimensionals on here. I'm almost done with the sheet of dimensionals. So I'll be pulling out a new one for the next project. All right, so this is just going to sit so that the sentiment is centered over the gap roughly. It's not going to be perfect, but I think that'll do. And now we can bring in these gems and our take your pick tool. <clears throat> and I used the smaller black ones for my first project. I use the big ones here. Um, just change it up slightly, but not dramatically. And we'll do one little one, just like that. All right, so that is the outside of our project. Now we still want to do the inside. And so I am going to adhere this little strip of designer series paper 
And again, this is a three quarter inch by four inch strip. So this doesn't work very well if you aren't doing a card liner because it will have gaps on either side inside just a card base. Um, but when you're, when you do have to do the card liner, I think it works really nicely. And I also like to glue this on before I adhere this into the card because that little bit of overhang bugs me. So we are going to trim that off. And I could use like my guillotine, but scissors are usually just fine. Um, okay, now we can stick this inside our card base. And actually, I think I'll stamp first just in case I totally destroyed this. Um, so bring that memento black out again. And this time I'm using the Your Stellar. Okay, and that looks like it's inked nicely. And because I know that I mounted the stamp straight, I can use the grid lines on that block to line it up and make sure that it's stamped straight on our cardstock. Okay, back to adhering. So I am using my seal for this panel. And the reason that I do that is that I don't like the look of liquid glue showing through and it really only does that with white for some reason so i just usually do my liners with seal even if i don't use the seal for anything else okay so that is today's facebook card class project i hope that you enjoy this i would appreciate your likes and shares that helps me tell Facebook that what I am doing does have some value for you. And I also would really appreciate your business if you do need to purchase any of these products. If you have any questions about how to order, sorry, I'm looking for my paper. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you have any questions, I am always happy to help you. You can message me on Facebook or on YouTube. I always look at all the comments as well. Um, if you are already shopping with me, then of course you have my phone number. So you're welcome to text and email all the time. Um, and I think that's it. So this is going to be my last regularly ish scheduled Facebook live for a few months. So I will be trying to continue to share some projects and potentially do lives here and there. It's just that there is no way to know what my schedule is going to look like from week to week. So I can't do anything really regular. But I will miss seeing you um, every week. And when I do come back, it will be hopefully back to the Thursday night routine that we've had for so long. So thank you for watching. I hope that you love this project and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.